right, good evening everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening with our webinar once again, our design uh, conversation. So uh, today with us, we have a very special guest. I think uh, most of you have seen his work uh, on on internet or on Facebook uh, uh, viral uh, in a lots of uh, Facebook pages, in animated Facebook pages. So now today we have Loon with us. So yeah, so Loon, uh, maybe you can uh, introduce yourself. Okay, uh, I'm Loon because I, I, I use this nickname on my Mac Lee Loon. I, personally, I also don't know how to pronounce my nickname. So like a lot of people ask me, always ask me how to pronounce this. Is it Mac Lee Loon, Mac Lee Loon, or anything like that. So you can pronounce anything that you like. But people that know me, they usually call me Loon. All right? Okay. Let me just quickly. Okay. I'm, as you know, I'm known as Magli Loon online. I'm actually a colorblind. I'm born colorblind, a red green colorblind. So I can't really see red or green color. But also, like, uh, I'm a IT graduate. I study programming last time. My degree is IT. Pure IT, nothing to do with design. But after I graduate, right, I sort of like want to do something that I always want to do since my childhood. So it's like drawing, doing fun stuff, creative stuff. I want to do games when I when I graduate. So I try to look for games company when I graduate. But unfortunately, when I graduate, right, there's not much games company in Malaysia. There's only like one or two big games company, and there's no mobile app at that time. That time we are still using Nokia, so like you can roughly guess how old I am. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we are playing the snake game on the Nokia phone, so that's the game that we have. But I'm also a bit lucky because during that time is the the booming of the flash game, right? Like so with my programming knowledge, I sort of like relearn like action script, and then I did a lot of flash game during the time for a lot, of, a lot of like clients like in local, international, right? Like that. Okay, so in a way, I do a lot of different stuff. You can see here, like I actually nowadays I do more on CG, VFX, using After Effects. I do film stuff, do animation stuff, like do corporate video, everything like that. And I do game dev. I did like HTML, HTML, CSS, web development before. I also draw. And then I currently I'm also a tutor in Taylor's University. It's a part time tutor, right? So I actually did a lot of stuff. Like people always ask me, Loon, what do you do, right? I sort of, it's very hard for me to explain to them because from time to time, right, I'll be doing different projects and then the scope is like very different and then people so like amazed with what I can do. And sometimes I also heard like a quotes like, how to say, jack of all trade, right? And then I say, you're a master of none. But I myself, right, I don't be really believe that quotes because it's not just me because sometimes when I see online, right, a lot of people are like me, they can do, they can handle like different stuff. And then like they can, let's say like a few famous example, especially in the game, in the game industry, the most famous in, I mean, like everyone knows like the game is like the farming games. Maybe I shouldn't mention, or should, can I mention? It's a okay. famous farming game, like it's a one person job. So like he did all the game art and then he did the programming that like you see, it's like sometimes I leave some even in the game, they work. They even compose their own music. So you can see there is people that is is very multi-talented, which I believe is the future trend because technology is always evolving. We have to keep on like relearn or pick up new skills, everything like that. So as you go as we how to say, as we do more projects, right? We have we'll learn more skills, everything like that. All right. Let's look at the left side. Okay. Now I'm currently with working with R and D studio. It's a small studio which is a bit like 13, 13 people. And here are some of the projects uh, which I did in the last few years. Some is an upcoming project. And the left one is a Batek Girl, which is a short animation which my company and my colleagues done. It's a group work and my boss. And there's another writer that write this story. It's won quite a lot of how to say uh it received quite a lot of awards and then like it was show yeah awards and then it's just show in a lot of short film festival animation the second poster you can see is a jungle magic it's a internal project it's a tv series animation it's completed now we are looking for 
um, broadcaster and investor for this animation. And the middle one is frame memories. It's my animation that I did last year, which, which is already online. It's free to view online. It's a short animation. And this one is also a group work. There's a lot of main names that I wish to mention, which I can mention later. So now the next two is Quay Apocalypse and Dalang Steel, which is another two short animation from R and D Studios. Like the Dalang Steel will probably goes online next month. So like try to look for them. It's like I highly suggested watching them. It's a bit different than what you will see on TV. Okay, so this is the Batik Girl, which we, I sort of like, it's a group project. Again, it's like, it's, we did this in 2018. It's like, we have like, you can see like, shown is 30 festivals. I think it's more now. This one is not updated and then like, premiere in 17 countries. Won five awards and then like, fans from a lot of different countries. So here are some screenshots that I did. Some, you can see the real world. You can see the top left is the background is I did. Uh, and then the Batek Wo is another designer, is Atika, is an in-house designer. The animation itself, we work closely with another 2D animation animation studio. They are 2D dude, which is very good 2D animation studio. So here's another interesting project which my company participated in 2019. It's a Disney Southeast Asia project. It's Wizard of Wana Walk. It is actually a redo of a Wizard of Waverly Hills or something. Yep, I'm going to, we have to go through very quickly. And here's some set photo which we shoot in Joho, Iskandar, I think. Okay. So now that's my office work. Now goes to my personal work a bit. So as you all know, like maybe some of you all have seen my, seen my artwork, right? So I'm just going to go through, okay? But before that, let me, can, can I pardon a second? I need to copy this link and share it to my yeah, partner. Sure, sure. Okay, so, sorry for the wait. Yeah, no problem. Hmm. All right, I'm back. So how do I explain my artwork? Okay, the way I do art right is a bit different than what most people did. Usually when people study in art school, right, they will start, you will go through the, how to say, is it the correct way of like doing art, like doing the, learning the basic, like the perspective line, the shading, how to do the shadow, everything like that. But because I'm IT graduate, right? And then I sort of like found my own way of like doing art. So because I don't want to go through all the perspective line, everything like that, I wish I learned, try to learn before. And I'm using my 3D, 3D skill sort of, which I pick up after I work as well. So like I try, sort of like try to render, build the 3D base first, and then I paint over them. And I never really hide this I mean, like sometimes people do hide, doesn't want to show their method, like how do they do any work, but I'm very open to that. I always share how I do works, but it might not be the best way to do, but at least for a non-art background, non-art background person like me, right, I think it's very, it's very fun to do in this way. You can come up with artwork very nice, very quickly. So this one is actually a 3D, which I add a bit of post-processing in Photoshop. You can see all the furniture that is a Japanese classroom. And I add the clouds. Because there's a lot of outroad. So I might need to go through quickly. So this one is uh, actually it's a photo that I took near an LRT under the LRT. And then I sort of like Photoshop it a bit so it look more much more like painting. Here's here's more. Like some is photo, some is 3D. Here's even more. I believe here the top left one is a photo which I come com together and then the bottom one is just pure painting, right? Okay, this two is actually just photo which I changed the sky. I think I took the photo originally in, in morning. I masked the back, I masked the sky out and then put in the evening and then the stars in the background. 
and this one is a what how to say it's a collage of like different photos painting everything together i love like the malaysian shop house because like sometimes i often see people say like oh the the view in japan is like, so nice everything like that we should visit japan but i think our view is is quite unique the shop house is quite nice also and then we should i think we should appreciate the scene in malaysia because i i'm not sure why people have the mentality that like the overseas is better on and then sometimes when we see the tourists came to malaysia right they tend to appreciate our stuff so like is it because we saw this scene every day and then like we sort of like got bored with it or there is some other reason i'm not sure but i think it's nice we have like nice scenery even it's dirty or anything like that right? but it's very nice <laughs> for artists so here are more stuff that i did which is based on local scenery you can see the bottom left is originally a photo which i changed the sky and then i paint a bit and then the top one is 3d you can see 3d model and then this one is a very old photo that i did for my company it's 3d and then background is painting so it sort of like blend together nicely i think that's even more if there's any question you can ask me okay there's even more <laughs> i have a lot of paintings like it's a I sort of like got, yeah, got I, think, I, think, I think when when you first posted all these things, uh, mm. uh, when a few of me and my friends were like mm. seeing this, we like we were like we were like very amazed with, with all these mm. artworks that we have. We yeah. can we can tell which one is three D and which one is 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 yeah. uh, real <laughs> photo. photo is painting. Right? Yeah. yeah, I I sort of like got addicted, and then there's one point right. I like painting like so so many like nowadays I a bit busy so it's like I have like less painting nowadays. Okay. So there's more like pylon. I don't know why I like love this. It's called a pylon, right? The electric pylon. I think oh, the yeah. details are quite nice. Even it's a uh, urban structures. It's like sort of like have nice silhouette, and then like with the beautiful evening skies. I think. And then here are more with the skies again. This one right is sky if you look at the galaxy right i don't know what is it called it's actually a brush that i made and then the tips that i can give there is a software which is called i can't really remember the name is it's procedural it sort of like generate procedural clouds like that so you can convert your that art to a brush okay so here's a video but i think streaming a video streaming a video is a bit slow so you can watch in my youtube if you want so like after doing all this painting right i can't satisfy my urge to like do more stuff i think that i feel that i need to animate them so here's an example but probably i won't be showing everything is free on my youtube so you can watch i'm not sure it's clear or not like the animation yeah, it's clear it's clear is the music on no music right ah uh, no yeah because i doesn't share the desktop music but basically you can see that i animate let me just for this thing and i can animate the characters like these are i think it's one of the first few animation that i did try to animate the background which i made so i try to put in the malaysian elements the roti man okay there's more stuff this is the putu mayam guy and then a mini bus youngster nowadays might not know what is a mini bus but I yes, think true, also know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's a pink mini bus. It's iconic, like. All right. So let's go. I won't be showing the whole animation, so let's go through. So I also try to do character. I might not be the best person that do character, but still okay, like, I believe myself, like still can, still acceptable. <laughs> so there's more like even bus stop. It's a Malaysian bus stop. I always like look at the bus stop. I took photo this one. I took photo and then change it how it looks much more anime i guess this one is 3d this one also the bus stop itself is 3d but the rest is painting and this one is another short animation i did together with a friend he's he's we hansin he's a very talented guy malaysian guy and i think i can show a bit this one he studied 2d animation overseas and then he have very good animation skill 
It's a very short animation. Yep, it's just a short loop that I did together with him. But you can see I'm reusing the 3D assets I made, the pink minibus and then everything like that. Yeah, I think I think one thing that I noticed about your short animation mm. that you would you would always have this thing uh that that is happening at the background, right? Like mm. like let's say the, the lorry that passed by is is the old type of lorry. I yeah. think this this is what, what amazed uh myself also when, when I look at your animation. Yeah. I think because I when I'm not, I didn't work in, because R&D is not a real animation studio. We only, we create IPs and then like we work with different studios to make animation. And then what I believe, right, is for animation, right, I'm not sure if this is correct. For animation, we need to make the world believable. We cannot just mm. put a static background there. So like we have to make something that's moving and then add some life to the animation itself. So that's why I add, tend to add a lot of like this background stuff. Then even if the leaf can move right, then I will try to move them. Yep. Okay, let's go back to the artwork. So this one is, as you see, it's like the Malaysian uni school uniform. Again, because I'm an anime guy, right? People tend to like the Japanese school uniform, right? And then I like say something like the Malaysian school uniform is not nice. But I think that one is just maybe it's a perception thing. It can be very nice if we do it with a nice art style. So yes, more. The edit. And the small artwork. Painting, everything like that. I love to paint cloud, as you can see. And there's more this one in night. There's even more. <laughs> oh, and there's more. So the middle one is actually something for Comic Festa, the countdown event. Unfortunately, it's like we doesn't have Comic Festa last year. But yeah. if there is a like Comic Festa again, they tend to do the 100 day countdown event, which I strongly encourage everyone to join. You doesn't need to pick a day because you just like pick a random day and then they can put it, put you in. And then like this one is sort of like push yourself, like do more artwork, yeah. writing on that. Okay. And before that, right, you can see the bottom right is an artwork that. Is a classroom scene again, which is a three, same three D asset that I use. So this is the advantage, use of using three D, which is the very first artwork that I showed just now. So like sometimes using three D, learning picking up a three D skill can be benefits to you as, as well. So imagine if you do it in two D, right? The camera is really long. You cannot cannot do anything. If you have three D, right? You can just move the camera again and then rearrange a bit and then render and then paint. You have a new artwork. So this one is more Comet st Fiesta stuff that I did. This is sort of like, because I will keep on mentioning how I use 3D, right? This one is sort of like a, yeah, let's quickly go through. You can view this in my YouTube because it's a before and after that. Let's just see it a bit. You can see the 3D, sometimes the 3D doesn't even need to do anything. Right, there is more, but let's just continue. Here is another one which is using photo. Same as that, it's a before and after. You see this different photo that I come together. And this is a photo that I changed to evening. With a little bit of adjustment, it can be looked like a painting. I never really hide the secret that I use photo, but like sometimes people might be very they scared that oh you use photo, you're cheating. But I okay. in my belief, right? If if I tell you I'm using photo, right, I'm not cheating anymore. <laughs> There's no thing, such thing as cheating or what. All right, let's just continue. Okay, that's all my sort of like 2D painting. I also did some 3D sometimes, mm -hmm. but this one will be much more faster. So I was like doing 2D, very painting style. Can I do like realistic style? Yes, obviously I can, but 
it's not my interest so i tend not to spend too much time on this sometimes i might use it use this style for work but this is some of my personal work there is much more of a close-up close-up view so it's like different stuff and then this one is again i'm using 3d to simulate the 2d look this one is even more the test that i did it's actually all this is actually 3d but i tend to make them to 2d like and this too is like you can find the tutorial online like some people are giving free tutorial like you can just like follow and then like make some changes okay because i study it right and my interest is always in game as well so i made a lot of games during my when i after i graduate i did a lot of flash game everything like that and i always want to do my own game as well and i have a opportunity like last i think three or four years ago with a local local games company they are called kirichi it's a very good games company which i did the post night together with them this is post night one okay before that right a bit of disclaimer this might not be the final look in the game because this is just like some of the work that i did for them so this post night right is a free game which you can download in the app store now and it actually won some awards like google something like that i can't really remember the awards name and a lot of people love, the, love this game you can download and play this game all right let's just see as what we did so this is some sketch that i did before before doing the characters and this character is in the game but this view is not so it's not the final look and this is some of the, like the different uh, armor for the characters for the players and some of the npc the npc i think they improved on on this npc already but roughly based on this design this one i think this guy is still there this guy is not there anymore it's not used and we also i also did like some enemies and then with the with burns rating like that it's 2d game so it's like so how this this game i mean like how the artwork is done right i usually like do everything in layers you can see like different layers and then i arrange them in a software called spine and then with this spine right i can animate and then export to unity the game itself is using unity the small stuff i did like items ui stuff everything and then here's some test ui it's not the final look doesn't look like this you can download the game and look at the new games here's a test like the first level the map the buildings different maps more maps even more maps this one is i think i believe this one is like draw by another artist in kirochi i just i just helped coloring them these two i think she's, her name is called sapphire if i'm not mistaken okay now post night two they are kirochi is doing post night two and it's early access now and obviously the artwork is much more better with their internal team their team grows bigger so like if you love post night one you should go to download post night two right okay there's other people games that i help to do and then i try to collaborate together i want to do my own game right so i always want to do rpg so like since like a few months ago in mco right so like sort of like repeat my programming skill a bit i want to try to do a pixel art jrpg they call it the jrpg so here's some screenshot with malaysian element again the pink bus is there and then the roti man is there so now i try to finish this game and my plan is just to give it free is you it might sound a bit stupid but i just want to give it free games but hopefully i can finish but now it's a bit busy so the progress is a bit slow now so here's some progress that i did it's a bit like the game called mother or earth mount which i am a big fan of people love final fantasy zelda right but i love the game called earth mount the game have much more progress now this one is much more earlier screen record so we with the option to change the night writing like that. this one is just like testing the feature i think 
And this huge thing is that I don't see those words that sometimes you see it on the street, right? Yeah. Right. There's another one you see my YouTube, but I think the time is okay. Maybe just let's go. Right. Animation is some other stuff that I did as well. And it's mostly my office work nowadays. I did animation, right? So I have the opportunities to work on my short animation last year. And this one is a project with it's an R and D project and it's also worked together with a Singapore company, Robot Playground. So I'm grateful they give me this chance to like do my own animation. Right. So this is I actually did the background myself. Again, it's actually 3D. You see the background, right? And I do some painting. And the character itself is designed in-house by my colleague. It's called Ida. And the animation itself, we actually work together with the 2D companies in Malaysia. It's called Dramatics. It's very, very talented as well. They did some anime as well. Yeah, more screenshot. This animation, right, is free. You can watch it in VC YouTube. And yeah. Uh, yeah. And the music itself, I have to, when you watch this animation, right, you have to use your headphone because the music, the original music is composed by a very talented region. It's called, his name is Andrew Bong, and he's the music guy for Upin Ipin. It's very nice. You have to watch it with the music. So there's more screenshot. And this one is a link. You can watch it in VC, but I'm not going to show now. You will spoil your experience. Watch it with your, <laughs> yeah, watch it with your headset. With your headset. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So now, who is this guy? This computer head guy, right? People are yeah. wondering who is this guy. Or yeah. explain. So this guy actually born with this. This is the first image that I did. It's like long time ago, like when I just graduated, right? And then my colleague, she told me, hey, Lun, you actually can post your artwork online or anything like that. So I just like quickly random draw this computer head guy and then post it in this platform, like, social media, Deviant Art. It's called Deviant Art. Like. I'm not sure people still use that nowadays. People are using ArtStation more nowadays. So it's actually a very simple design, a computer head or a TV head, which we, from time to time, we see in a lot of media as well. It's not really original, but I still using that, still quite like the design. So I actually did quite a lot of artwork based on this computer head guy. So people say, is it, is it based on you or is your original character? I think that one is not much important anymore. Like I sort of like love to use this guy for different artwork. So here's some artwork, which I think I passed this before to you. The third yeah. image for your event, right? Because it's a vector. Yeah, yes. so now it's like, I tend, I try, I worked on Vector a lot last time because of Flash game, but nowadays I use Photoshop more la, and I think, so none Vector anymore. So here's even more, and then we can see this Pipit, I'm not sure if people understand, know what is Pipit community. It's an art community like long yeah, time ago. Like, was yeah. a very long time. Remember the guy, Mike, <laughs> Michael. Yeah, it's good time. And I noticed that Pipit, a lot of famous people came from Pipit. Right? Yeah. 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 Here's all the vector that I did. It's more, yeah, even more 3D. I also make 3D. Try to experiment with the 3D. This one is a earlier work. That's why the face will be different. And as usual, right? When I, when I, when illustration or drawing cannot satisfy me anymore. I will animate my character like this one I did a few months ago, I guess. This one is in After Effects. There is music, but there's more like, but I'm just going to, yep. not going to show everything. You have to watch it with music, like. it's a bit weird for me. Okay, now, in around last year, October or November, a friend, a friend called me and messaged me, say he wanted to do toys with C. John. And we discussed a bit, like he say, do I need to like come up with new design or anything like that? I also like, I even like offer him like, there's a few good designer. You can contact them too. He said he want to do my design because he loved this computer head guy as well. So I quickly, at first I was like drawing a few concept art and then I, I thought like if I give the 
the sculptor, the 2D, right? They might not, they might not produce the thing that I want. So I sort of like remember I know 3D. Right? Why don't I just model the 3D myself? So this is actually the first 3D that I model, and the render is obviously look realistic. Okay, and then I sort of like discussed with the my friend, and like actually he also agree like this design, but it's a bit empty. There's no like items or anything like that, accessories. So this you can see is like different angle. And we come up with another design, which is the camping. It's like it goes to camping, so I can put more plants or thing. And there's a black version as well, like premium version. And it's like after doing the 3D, right, passing the 3D, and then we asked the factory to produce, right? While waiting to see the product, I sort of like use reuse the same 3D to render in different scene, like to visualize how you look. And it's more render, 3D rendered. And this is a real product of the photo that we received from the factory. It's the first prototype. And you can see that they actually make some changes to the 3D, like this one, right? They carve in a bit so they can paint. So the paint can stay more accurate to the to the model. And while waiting for the for this to be colored, right? I actually went on to like draw a few illustrations to be print and to be printed and then together bundle together with the toys. And then this more illustration. And actually, again, like when the static drawing can't satisfy me more, I have to animate them. This one is just simple animation. It's just like moving the background a bit with the same illustration. Right again. Let's just go to the next one. And here's the photo that we received when it arrived in Malaysia. Right, the product we have the black version, and then the colored version. And this is the white version that I say is like it's supposed to be a charity for a charity event. Like you, the my friend, the guy at Pilot Toys from Pilot Toys, right? He will like. Give this, pass this to a few famous artists in Malaysia, and then they will customize it, and then we will auction or sell it online. The profit will goes to charity, hundred percent go to charity. Okay, so here's some photo I took, and then this is something that we add on extra as a gift that person that purchase our stuff, and I also give it to a few friends uh, because it's limited. Right? I cannot give everyone. So sorry <laughs> for the person that didn't receive. <laughs> Okay, so here's the details for it. If you're interested, you can just call this, go to search this pilot toys project and then you can support them. Okay, another thing I want to mention, right? This pilot toys project is supposed to start with three designers. So one is me, because my progress is very fast, right? I know 3D, that's why my one is come up first. The other one is from a very popular local designer, Kenji Chime. I'm sure a lot of yeah. people know him. He's a very famous street artist. So he's using his, his creation, the Chai Go, the dog, making it to a Godzilla version is coming out soon. So like if you're his fan, you should check out this Pilot Toys project. And there's an upcoming designer, which I know who is him, but I don't think I can mention. It's a local designer as well. You will see very soon that one. All right. Okay. Thank you. That's my presentation. I hope it's not too boring. You can follow me in this social media. And any okay. questions? <coughs> Thank you so much. All right, uh, to all of you, any questions that uh, you wanted to ask? Yep. Oh, Daryl, it's not, it's not me, definitely it's not me. <laughs> okay, um, so can you tell us more like why you design such character, you know, with, with the PC head? In the, yeah, this one is a question that cannot be answered as well. It's just randomly, <laughs> I want to draw that. <laughs> and then like, from that point on, right, right, I keep on drawing that. As, but there is a point that I sort of like stopped drawing this character. I was like doing more background, right? As you can see from the sharing, my sharing, right? I was like doing more background, like all the background that I did. It's until like this pilot toys guy called me again. And then I sort of like, 
hey, this one is like last time I used to draw him why I stopped, right? Mm -hmm. And now I yeah. sort of like repeat, repeat again, or like pick it up, up again and then like draw it again. So you can see there's a point of time I'm really into this background stuff. Yes. Yeah. No reason. Uh. Sometimes not everything has need to have a reason. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, <clears throat> like for example, uh, I mean, especially I, I like I like the way you uh, describe yourself. Yeah. You know, like like a uh, hybrid uh, designer, yeah. uh, colorblind. Yeah. So can can you tell me more about uh, what's what's your challenges being a colorblind person in especially in design and in in mm. animation that, that you have colors and all these things. Hmm. And you did mention that your you are colorblind towards red, right? Red and green, yeah. It's a very common yeah. colorblind trait, yeah. So yeah. the is but you know in the way that in your artworks, uh, I can see that you use red and green perfectly. Yeah, but the red and green I see is different from what you see. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Because okay, the first thing first, right? Being a colorblind, right? People sometimes. When they know I'm colorblind, right, they will be very surprised, and then they will they want to ask me question, but they're very shy, and then they scared if that will offended me or not. But for me, it's actually a very interesting topic to discuss. I always say, yeah. "Oh, I'm colorblind," and then like, "What? I cannot see, right?" Because red and green is very common, and then like, how what color do I see? Well, best example that I can give is when you drive, right? You go outside, you look at traffic light, the green color, right? The green. I didn't see green. I see it as white. The green light, right? I see it as white color, nearly as white color. That's what. That's my issue. And then, like, although it's red and green color blind, but there is some color. It's a mix of red and green, right? Like, purple is a mixture of like blue and red. So purple, I tend to see it as blue. Orange, I may see it as yellow because there's less red I see. So. The challenges I think in digital art is not as problematic as like doing manual work. That's why I don't do a lot of manual painting because I can't see the colors. But in digital, right, we have the tools, like we have the hexadecimal code. I can just look at the hexadecimal codes. I can look at the hue. We have this color viewer, hue, saturation, and values. So I actually can just look at the hue, which is the range. Like I know this range is actually orange, or this range is purple, this range is pink. So like in digital, right, it doesn't make much difference. But there is there are cases that sometimes like when I, when I do painting, when I do stuff, right, I need to double check with my colleague, like doing office work, like is this too green or is this too red, everything like that. There is case like that, but I always can ask someone to help me to check. Yep, there's not much problem. But I remember one incident when I'm young, right, in primary school, I was in this drawing class. And then I draw using crayon and I paint the human green. Everyone is laughing and I cannot understand why. And then my teacher is a very good teacher. He say, oh, there's nothing wrong. You can just paint human green. So I'm very grateful for my teacher. But at the time, I still don't know I'm colorblind until that when I'm in 18, I think my dad bring back a colorblind test book. And then I, I sort of, it sort of like surprised me that like I'm colorblind, but it doesn't affect me that much actually. Okay, that's great. Yeah. I think yeah, I think I think like you say, it's true I mean, I mean, I to me, I feel that uh, when you have the will to do something, it mm. doesn't matter who you are or yeah. what what you have, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, from from IT, from somebody from IT going into animation, going into arts, you know, it's 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 quite a long uh, a long leap, right? Yeah. So. What what makes you having that interest? Is is it just because you you love to draw since you were young? Yeah, I love to draw since I'm young. I draw like even before kindergarten. Like when I'm young, my dad always bring back this. I can't remember what this paper called. Is I think it's called a dot matrix printer. I'm not sure if anyone still know what is that. It's a kind of printer. When they print right, it's like a dot like that. It's like this currently, like we are using laser printer, everything like that. So like this paper, like he always bring back this paper and then I will draw on this paper. And then I will sort of like have this habit of like even drawing in my class, right? I still remember there's one incident when in my primary school, 
my teacher right, is like teaching in front and then I find the class very boring. So I sort of like start to doodle on the textbook. And then my teacher sort of like teasing me, oh, you, you didn't listen to my class and then you draw everything like that. I still <laughs> remember all this small incident. But I love to draw like that. But that doesn't stop me from keep on drawing. Yeah, it's my interest. This happened to most of us also, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the IT itself is because that time, right, when after SPM, right, is the IT boom, right? Last time, people, everyone wanted to go to IT. Yeah. And then I sort of to follow follow them. Uh. And originally, I wanted to go to a games programming degree or something like that. But I cannot, during my time, right, I cannot find any games related degree or anything like that. So I have to take an IT course, pure programming. So I sort of like, can pick up programming language, which proves to be useful now. If I want to do my own games, I can try to do my own script. No need to like rely on other person. Yeah. All right, awesome. So, any questions from uh from the audience that you wanted to ask? You can you can just type in into the comment section. All right. So, uh, last year it's a it's a tough year to many of us because of the uh lockdown and so on so so has has this pandemic actually uh changed the way you do your work or or change your mind towards uh towards your own work or, or how the, the whole process of your work that you do okay because last year is pandemic right it is unfortunately it's like we have to work from home at first it's like everyone is like very happy right? oh, you can work from home it's like you can sleep until I satisfy everything and then I start to work until the midnight. But after a while, right, I noticed the, the, what is it called? The rate of like, the production rate is like sort of like goes now and then everyone become more lazy. And then like, we didn't see the colleague often enough, become depressed, become sad, everything. And it's sort of like, it's not only changing the way we work, it's like sort of like changing people as well, like their emotion, everything like that. So I hope, Actually, I really hope this pandemic can be over and then can see everyone again. By the way, now I'm actually in office. We start to work in office again. and But unfortunately, the case goes up again. But I really hope it will go now. Okay, now back to, sorry for sidetracking a bit. Now let's go back to how did it affect my, or change the way I work. It actually doesn't really change that much because we are doing digital work, right? Yeah. The only thing, yeah, we still like can use Google Drive, I think like that. Which we already, which I already practice in my office, and then we use Google Sheets to keep track of tasks, or anything like that, which is same as well. The only main thing is the meeting. Last time we have office meeting, right? We can see each other, but now we have like online meeting, which it can be good for someone, it can be not so good for someone. The main thing is that. Okay, and because I teach, right? Because I sometimes I, I teach as a tutor in Taylor's. Now, obviously the class have to be online, but I prefer to be teaching campus because online, right? You know, the students sometimes, you don't know they are listening or not. They just, oh yes, we are listening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that more meetings is online. The work is still using PC and then we still use email and then like, you use Google Drive. Doesn't affect that much, luckily. For this industry, okay. though, luckily. Yeah, I think, yeah. I, think, I think when it comes to uh, online teaching, most of us uh, face the same thing, right? Yeah. Face to face is better, obviously. We can see people, emotion, expression. Online is like you cannot see the people reaction. Like the one is very important, which I learned last year. Like when I doing one project, right? It's like people you can when you can see people is very important. Yep. Is there any question? Yeah, I think I think no questions from the from the audience yet. Any questions from the audience that uh, you wanted to ask Loon about uh, yeah. the things that he does and all these things? <laughs> so any any plans for your second toy? <laughs> now you have done the first toy. Any plan for the second one? The toys that one have yeah. to have to sell first. <laughs> <laughs> I've got enough people buy first, uh, cannot like keep on doing right. But we already have a second design in mind, which we already right. discussed with him. But this one have to finish selling first, uh, because have to cover the cost first, right? 
yeah, yeah. And, and also because because uh, last year and this year, lots of uh, toy festival has been mm. uh, postponed or cancelled or or we yeah. can't fly there. Even yeah. even this year, uh, we have uh, we have Taipei Toy Festival, but we mm. we have already foreseen that we can't fly there, and mm. and we were given few options to participate. Mm. You know, yeah. You you send your toys there is it, without you. Uh, we, we have to we have to send the toys there, but especially like your toys were in in racing, right? So. Mm. So sometimes it's it's quite worrying also to, to send racing toys because it mm. somebody might break it in in, yeah, in the process. Yeah, it. yeah actually yeah. that's happened to the design of my toys when they send the first prototype, right? Some part is broken, like so I have to be extra careful. Okay, have, so we yeah, have yeah. questions coming in. Uh any tips for fresh graduates who want to go into animation or design? Any tips? Okay, I want to say hi to Ivan Junaidi. This guy is actually my boss. <laughs> He's asking <laughs> questions. <laughs> yeah. Any tips for fresh grad? Okay, how do I give tips? Mm, it's very hard to say, but I think you need to maintain your passion. Is because I've seen a lot of like not just design, but sometimes IT. I have like a lot of IT friends. They doesn't really do IT anymore. They do like selling insurance, like different random stuff. So like to do any works, you must maintain the passions, like else you don't burn out your passion. Like maybe you don't feel like drawing, right? So it's okay to stop and then try to pick up another skill. Maybe try to learn some 3D like me. Like I do different stuff, right? Because even sometimes when I draw, like until I feel like doesn't want to draw anymore, then I will try to do 3D. And then I don't want to do three D, right? Then I will do, try to do scripting a bit for a few weeks. So like you rotate what you did, and then I try to be inspired. Like sometimes people will ask me a question about how do we inspire everything like that. I I think that one is you have to change your mindset a bit. You can be inspired by anything that you see, not necessarily not necessarily just movies or animation. Like sometimes you can just walk in the street, like for me, right? When I walk in the evening, right, and then I look at the sky, oh, it's a very beautiful cloud or evening, or just grab, take a photo, and then for my reference next time. So it's like, try to change your mindset. Everything can inspire you, like, when you pay attention and observe the details properly. So pay attention and then slow down your life a bit. Don't go through very fast. Just observe everything carefully and then enjoy your life. Go. Okay, this one, I'm Illustrator, I want to make my own games. Is it possible to self-taught programming? Yes, it's possible. Anything is possible. Programming is actually, nowadays, you doesn't need to be so worried about whether the programming sounds very technical and advanced. But because nowadays, right, we have the tools like Unity or Adobe Animate and the free open source one is called the Godot, G-O-D-O-T, which I'm using now. I love that software. You should definitely, if you're into games design, you should definitely look into that. And we also have like Unreal, which is also free. So there is a lot of tutorials and then you can learn it online. And programming, right, for when you're using this software, right, it's actually more like you're just writing the logic. So like if, let's say, I can give a good example, like if the logic is like this, if I press the left button, move my character on the X position, like minus minus, it's something like that. It's very logic-like. You don't need to think about very advanced math or something like that. It's very logic-like, so it's possible. Will you publish an art book? I would love to, so we'll see. But unfortunately, when I draw, right, I tend to draw in low resolution, like 1920 times 1080. It can be print, but it's not high res. I don't know why I have the habit because I, Want to save hard disk space? What I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> Yo, you okay, be showing your works at any galleries or show this year. That one, I think it could be because that one I have to discuss with the, my friend at Pilot Toys Project. I think he have plan for that. Is yeah plan yep. Yep. So I think I think just um, follow uh, loans. Uh, Facebook page, 
uh, Facebook and and also uh, so, YouTube channel. Let me just quickly go to the yep. slide. last slide. Yep. There's one more question. Yeah. Maintaining own passionate towards drawing. Hmm. It's a very hard to answer question as well. Like I say just yeah. now, right? You, maybe you already bought, right? Maybe try something else. No need to force yourself to do something. It's okay. It's always okay to take a break. But sometimes we see advice that, oh, don't give up or anything like that, right? That one is not true. Lah. You can actually always like, have a rest and then like continue again. Don't worry about that. And then try not to compare yourself with another person, right? Because I always see people, right? They, they sort of like, they when they compare right, and then they get depressed, like, why I share this artwork? I spend like 10 hours drawing this artwork. Why I get like one like? And this guy just simply draw and then he get like 100 likes. Don't, okay. don't look into that that much. You just enjoy the process of creating the art. And then like, if you can change your mindset to that, right, you will be much more happy. Right? And then, yeah. Do you have any artists or designers that you, you would like to collaborate with in the future? I actually want to collaborate with a lot of people, but because due to my time, right, I'm actually quite busy, so I have to turn off a lot of offers as well. It's not that I'm arrogant or what, but I'm actually, when I mean I'm busy, right, I'm really busy. I cannot really afford like, to do any collaboration because like, when, when I'm doing one work, right, I'm very serious. I, I don't just simply do, like when people ask me, I want to collaborate or not, and then I don't just simply do and then give them a, a a very low quality work. I want to do it. I want to ensure it's a very good quality stuff. That's why I don't really collaborate that much. This the only time is like when I work with together with my friend, which is the animation I showed just now, the bus yeah, animation. But I would love to. But if the collaboration is like goes through my company, right, then it's easier for me to maintain. Like it's a company work, right? Then I can just do it under company. Yep. All right, so uh, I think that's all that we have for today. So thank you everyone for joining us. And then uh, thank you, Loon, for agreeing to do this uh, yeah. with, with your, with your okay. very busy schedule. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so everyone, uh, if you have anything that you wanted to ask uh, Loon, uh, you can actually uh, add him and then you can actually uh, message him as well so um, i'm sure yeah. he's he's very kind to, to share a lot of things and and even even on on facebook i see him sharing a lot of tutorial uh the thing that he does how he does uh, i remember you share like how you do uh water ripple on the river yeah. right yeah <laughs> yeah so, so, yeah. Well. so you, can, you can just follow uh loon's uh facebook youtube uh, and, and also his Twitter to, to, to get up to date of what he's doing. So again, um, mm. thank you so much uh, for all of you mm. that who joined us today. Uh, and thank you, Lun, for uh, agreeing to do this. No problem, no problem. Uh, and this, is, this, this session, we have a very special session where Lun don't show his face with yeah. only Avatar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? just so, remember me like that. <laughs> yeah, no thank you. Just yeah. love my artwork is enough already. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think I think I, I, I only see Loon's real face like once or twice only. And, yeah, <laughs> and many years ago. Time, I, yeah, yeah, many yeah. years ago. And I, I only see this uh, monster head uh, of yeah. my just maintain okay. this image is enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank it's you everyone. So enough.